Okay, so we're going to take a look at the installation of Windows 7, and it's not all that different from Windows Vista, so we're not going to spend too much time here. We're going to let it do its thing, though, and we'll see some of the changes. Here we see it's loading up the files, and that little graphic is new. I like that. Very colorful. Here we see a familiar screen that we would see with Windows Vista as well. We're asked the language that we want to install Windows 7 in, the time and currency format, and the keyboard or input method. So these are fine. We'll hit next. And then here we're asked if we want to install now, or if we look to the left there, we can repair our computer. Again, these are not new features. These are all available in Windows Vista as well. Then we're asked about the license agreement, so we want to accept the license agreement. And we're asked what type of installation we want. In this case, we don't have Windows Vista that we're installing over, so we're just going to do a custom install, which will install a new copy. And then we're asked about where we want to install it. In this case, we only have a disk that we've configured on this virtual server of 20 gigs. Basic minimum requirements are that you have at least that amount so that you can do the installation. In fact, as we see, the features here are pretty much the same in terms of installation that you would have with Windows Vista. Microsoft is also working really hard to ensure that the minimum requirements necessary to run Windows 7 are the same as they are in Windows Vista. And so even though some of the minimum requirements are not necessarily exactly correct, for example, some say 512 megabytes is the minimum requirement for RAM, but in actuality, Windows Vista doesn't run very well on 512 megabytes of RAM, so that's not really a good minimum. 2 gigs, now that's a decent minimum if you want the system to run appropriately. So I would recommend the same for Windows 7, uh, 2 gigs of RAM, and plenty of hard disk space because the thing takes up quite a bit. A decent processor. Microsoft operating systems require quite a bit of processing power memory power, disk space, so you might as well really make sure you have a decent system to set this up on. Now here we see we're asked to provide a username and a computer name. And then we're asked to provide a password, retype it, and then provide a password hint. Next we have to establish our settings for Windows updates, and then set up our time zone. Then we choose the computer's current location, whether it's home, work, or a public network. Again, all of this is pretty much standard in Windows Vista. Now we're asked if we want to create a home group. Now this actually is new. As you can see, it says a home group links computers on your home network so that you can share pictures, music, videos, documents, and printers. What it really does is, in Windows 7, it provides you a single interface to accomplish the sharing of all of these different things. It's protected with a password, and so others can join the home group with that password. But don't worry, if you don't write it down here, you can go into the home group applet when you have Windows 7 installed, and you'll be able to change that password or write it down if you didn't write it down at this point. And then others can join your home group and it makes for a much easier method of sharing this information with other people in your home. So now it will finish finalizing our settings. And there we go.